to Python intro unit lesson four. Now this lesson is going to be very similar to the first two lessons that you completed. I'm not going to give you a lot of help because you should be able to do a lot of things on your own at this point. But I'll walk you through the first part of it to help you feel comfortable. Let's go ahead and start by putting your name at the top and the date. And this is a, the class schedule program. So what you're going to do is create several buttons, one for each class period, and you're going to display information about your class. We are going to need to import our GUI module. So remember to do your import, simple GUI. If you forget how it's spelled, just look down here and you see that we've used it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be importing is my simple GUI. And we're going to use some global variables. Now in the past we just used a single message but this time we're going to have three lines of text. So I could call them message one, message two, message three. I'm going to call them line one, line two, and line three. And I'm going to give each one a value. Now these values are going to go in quotation marks. So the first one I'm going to say, because this is going to run at the beginning of the code, I'm just going to say select a class period. And the other lines, I don't need to say anything in them yet. I'm going to use them inside my other function. So I'm just going to leave them with empty screen, strings. We've done this before in App Lab, so this should be fairly familiar to you. And I'm going to have a color variable, so I can pick a different color for each class. I'm just going to start with white. Okay, now just like we did last time, I'm going to have a section for my button event handlers. And so every time I create a new button, I'm going to create a function for it, and I'm going to put it right here. And then this is where all the drawing is going to be. And then this is my main program. Okay, let's get started by actually creating a button and a label. So the label is just going to look nice on the screen there. So I'm going to do a frame dot add with an underscore label and make sure that you're spelling everything correctly. And this label is just going to do that. It's not going to, I'm not going to click on it. So all I have to do is put in quotation marks what I want the label to say. And it's going to say my schedule. I could say my class schedule if you'd like. And then I want it to stretch as long as the buttons, so I'm going to just say 200. Now I want to add a button. Before I gave you the code, this time you're going to type it, but you're going to do a frame.add underscore button. Now what do you want the, the button to say? Like period one or first hour? That's what you're going to put in quotation marks, and then the name of your function. So I'm just going to kind of do a little shortcut. I'm just going to call it like pair one, short for period one. And then I want it to stretch across. So I'm going to have the size of the button. So I have what goes on the text of the button, the function, and the size. Okay. So let's actually create that button, the button event handler for this button. And remember, def is short for define, and I called my function peer1. So that's what I'm going to type up here. I always have to do my open and close parentheses and a, quote, and a colon. Now, notice when I press enter that it already indents for me, and it's going to keep my indenting um, the same consistent. So if you don't mess anything up and you just go by what, what the computer has, you'll be all right. Now I'm going to be changing the values of these three lines and my color. So I'm going to make them global and I can just do that all on one line at the top. So I have line one, line two, line three, and color. So when I make the change, it will actually take place. Now what do you have first hour? Let's say that you have my class. So I could say, um, period one, and I can say what room it is. Room 204. Now what do I want to say in line two? Maybe I want to say who the teacher is or what the class is. So this would be computer science 12H. And then in line three, I'm going to say the teacher. And I'm going to pick a color. And I like green, so I'm going to make it green. Now let's go ahead and test this. You shouldn't do a lot of code before you test it because if something's going wrong, you want to know as soon as possible. So we're going to run this code. I'm going to click on my button. You see the label right there? It looks really nice. And sure enough, I get period one. But wait a minute. Didn't I like write three lines of code? Didn't I have the name of the class and the teacher? Where is it? I'm not getting any errors. I'm just not getting the lines. Well, let's take a look at our draw function. It's only drawing line one, but we have three lines. So you're going to have to add some code here and every line of code is going to be the same. I'm just going to change the location. So I'm going to start with canvas draw 
text, and just be careful of your typing. Now instead of line one, this time I'm going to say line two. I'm going to do a second variable. Now what I have in square brackets is the location. 40 means how far over on my canvas, and the 100 is how far down. Well, I want both lines to start the same, so I'm going to start them both at 40. But if I start them at both at 40, 100, they're going to overlap each other. You can try it and see. So I want them to move this one down. So I'm going to make this number a little bit bigger, um, maybe 130. And then I need my, my square bracket again. Now, what happens if I only do like 110 instead of 130? Well, I want you to kind of experiment, try it, and see what happens. Now, this is going to be the next number is the size of my text. So right now, my text is size 24. You can change that. And I'm going to use the same color throughout. So I'm just going to use color. Now, I have three lines. So I'm going to do this again, canvas.draw text. And this time, I'm going to say line three. I'm still going to start at 40 because I'm going to start over the same, but I want to go down. So I'm going to make this number even bigger, 160. I've got my square brackets, I've got the size of my text, and I've got the color. So now my draw function is going to, should draw three lines of text. Let's see if it does. All right, I've got one button down. Guess how many we have more to go? Well, we've got eight class periods at school, so I'm going to add seven more buttons and I'm going to add seven more of these. I can change the color each time and even put in lunch, put in your advisory, all those, that is all part of your schedule. So I'm going to give you some time now. You can pause or stop the video and keep working on your program. Now one thing I want to point out to you is if you are doing a copy and paste, you need to be careful about your indenting. Remember that your definition should always start off at the edge. So notice if I come here and I just do a paste, so this def is not at the edge, make sure that you backspace it and get it off the edge. Otherwise, you will run into errors. And it can be a little frustrating. So just kind of look for that and also make sure that you change all of your names, that each one needs to be unique. Then you shouldn't have any trouble. So just keep those things in mind. OK, I got my program done. How did you do? When I run it? I'm going to have all eight buttons, and then every one of them works. I've changed some of my colors. And if I, I can go in any order, everything works. So this is how you should be. If you haven't done so yet, you want to make sure that you save this. You don't have to get a new URL, but make sure that you do a save, and that you're going to copy this, and you're going to paste it into your document where it asks you to. And you're going to do your exit ticket, and you are good to go.